special public comment session in Hermitage. I'm Erin Evans. I'm the council member for District 12. We are currently in District 14. Councilman Roten was unable to be here today and he sends his regrets. Um, to my left, we have Councilman Hager in District 11. We have Council Member Jeff Syracuse from District 15. Of course, our chair, Councilman Bob Mendez, uh, and then Councilman Withers, Brett Withers from District 6, and Councilman Russ Bradford from District 13. In the back is Councilman Freddie O'Connell from District 19. Uh, with that, I will turn it over to our chair, Councilman Bob Mendez. Thanks, Council Member Evans. Um, Good evening, everybody. I'm Bob Mendez. I'm the chair of the council's East Bank Stadium Committee. And this is the fifth of five public comment sessions that we're holding around the county about the proposed uh, $2.1 billion stadium. Um, I am gonna start with about a 15 minute presentation that um, goes through materials that the East Bank Stadium Committee has gathered so far. Um, the idea is that this is um, going to be sort of like a book report of things the uh, committee has learned for people who are really, really in favor of the stadium. Um, the presentation is not going to be positive enough. And if you're opposed to the stadium, it's not going to be critical enough. But the idea here is to point out the information that we've gathered and let the public decide for themselves. Um, through the slides, um, you'll see that there's um, references on each slide to where the slide came from. Um, none of them are created by the committee. They're all um, cut and paste from presentations we've received from other people. Um, after the presentation, we are going to have um, a, a public comment se section um, where it's not gonna be Q&A, but y'all can take turns coming up. You'll have a three minute time limit. And when you get to 30 seconds left, um, our staff is going to wave the yellow card. And when you're out of time, you'll get the red slash pink card. Um, and uh, again, this is the fifth one we've done um, all across the county. I appreciate y'all being here. Um, I'm gonna dive into the presentation and um, start going. So on the first slide, um, there's a QR code um, to start with that will get you to the committee um, page that we've put together. And I think it's fair to say that the um, East Bank Stadium Committee page has more information about this proposal than any project Metro has ever uh, worked on ever. It's got all the presentations we've done. It's got videos of all the meetings we've had. Um, there's an extensive Q&A um, of questions that the council has presented to the mayor's office. Um, it also has all the legislation from the original stadium in the 90s and the proposed legislation we're looking at now. Um, the purpose of the committee is to lead the council's efforts to gather information for the public and for the council and just to be a central gathering place um, for storing that information. Our committee is not gonna vote on the proposal one way or the other. We're gathering information so the other regular committees of the council can have info to base their comments on. Um, the starting point um, for understanding the stadium proposal is to understand some terms of the current lease. And I'm just gonna ask the IT guys, um, do you guys mind turning this down just a little bit? Um, thanks. Um, so there's been a lot of back and forth that, thank you, that you guys have seen in the media um, about uh, obligations under the existing lease. And there's three numbers to keep track of. What's the absolute minimum the city's required to do under the lease? Um, what's the most we could do to have a really nice renovation? And what's new cost? And I've, I've told people, I think about it the same way you would think about a renovation at your house, or if you had a car that was uh, needed some repairs, you look at what's the, what's the least I have to do to make it work? What's the most to really do a nice fix up? And what's the cost for um, going new? Um, first, the terms of the lease, what we're required to do. We're required as a city um, to keep Nissan in quote, first class condition. And this is a slide from the Metro Council um, uh, office. And if you download it from um, that QR code, you can press on that link and get the full presentation. Uh, first class condition means that we have to keep the stadium in the same condition as a reasonable number of comparable facilities. And comparable facilities is defined on the next slide 
as basically, it's a lot of words um, straight out of the lease, but it basically means comparable facilities are those built 10 years before and 10 years after Nissan was built. So a range of about 1989 to 2009. There's a, a wide range of st stadiums in those 20 years. Um, the big AT&T stadium uh, for the Cowboys in Dallas barely fits in. I think it went online in 2009. And then at the other end of the spectrum, there's some stadiums that have been torn down. Um, I think it's all clear now that we don't have to match the nicest stadium and we're not supposed to match the worst stadium. We're supposed to be matching uh, a reasonable number of some of those stadiums in the middle. People could argue over that. People do argue over that, but that's what we're required to do. Um, let's see. So, uh, and the other thing about the lease that I need to mention is that um, the Titans for these um, last 20 some years have had certain limited development rights um, where under certain circumstances, they could have built on some of the land that's parking lots um, between the stadium and the interstate. Um, they've never uh, chosen to exercise those development rights. And so they remain unused right now, but they've had that as part of the lease for the last 20 some years. All right, so moving on to the next slide. Again, um, the choices are renovate either minimum or super nice. And we'll look at um, uh, renovating first. Um, the um, next slide, the next two slides talk about what's the minimum under the lease. And the only, the best data we've got about that is that five years ago, our sports authority did a study that showed that there needed um, $293 million worth of things fixed at Nissan Stadium. And as you'll see on the next slide, um, some other uh, things would be required that didn't have a cost on it. Um, that are listed out there. So at a bare minimum, I don't think anybody anywhere argues that the minimum that we owe is less than the 293 million plus whatever these things cost. And again, this is five years ago. And um, so that's the absolutely, nobody could possibly argue it's less than that. At the high end of this um, spectrum, um, the Titans have, uh, suggested to the sports authority and to the city that the current requirement of um, to make it a, a very nice renovation would be $945 million now. And then on the next slide, you'll see another $894 million over the next 15 years or so for a total price tag of $1.8 billion. I think at this point, um, the committee has gathered enough information where it's safe to say that this high-end number, 1.8 billion, is definitely more than we're obligated to do as a city. So at one end of the spectrum, we've got 293 is certainly too low, and we've got 1.8 billion is certainly too high. And, um, and beyond that, um, that's all the information there is. Um, some people uh, in the council, in the community, think it think it matters to figure out what it is we owe under the lease. Some people think we don't. There are council members I've heard who guesstimate it's 500 million. I've heard other council members guesstimate a billion or a billion two. And it all, to me, underscores the um, we, we don't know um, exactly what it is to uh, cost to do the minimum due under the lease. So let's talk about um, proposed new stadium. Um, on that, uh, I want to start by mentioning that in one of the early sessions that we had of this, and it's not in the presentation, somebody asked about TSU. Um, TSU has had the right um, since the stadium was built to hold most of their whole home games at Nissan, and um, they're going to be included in whatever whatever happens with a new stadium. The proposal is that they would have the same rights for home games in a new stadium as they have um, in the current stadium. So no change there. Um, the finance pro financial proposal for the new stadium is a total cost of $2.1 billion. And of that, $840 million would come from the team. And then the next two bullet points is $500 million from the state. Um, and that's only available if it's a new indoor stadium. Um, the team has, or the state has put that restriction on there. And uh, then the third bullet point is $760 million um, from Metro uh, in the form of sports authority bonds. 
The bottom two bullet points, um, which you'll see total about $60 million, are obligations that Metro currently has um, that would go away with the proposed financing arrangement. Um, one of them is uh, the city owes the team about $30 million for various improvements that have been done over the last handful of years. And then um, the city still owes about $30 million to pay for Nissan um, because those were 30-year bonds and it's not paid off yet. Um, so part of the financing, um, just like if you were buying a new house, you, the loan would pay off the old. Um, here, the Titans would pay off that $30 million as part of the deal. Um, part of the proposal also would be that those unused um, development rights from the Titans would be returned to Metro. Um, and the Titans have also um, committed to cover cost overruns. Um, and, you know, for the last stadium, we built the soccer stadium. It ended up being about, I think, about $75 million over the price that was approved by the council. And so that matters um, who pays if the cost of a football stadium is more than the $2.1 billion that's proposed. And the Titans are obligated to cover that under the proposal. Um, the next slide talks about the source of funds. And for this, there's some things we know and there's some things we don't know. Um, the top four bullet points um, talk about tax revenue streams that would be committed to pay Metro's share, that $760 million of revenue bonds that Metro would have to provide. And, and basically, the biggest um, single pot of money is believed to be a new 1% um, added to the hotel occupancy tax. This is another one where the state has put a limitation on it, where that, um, that tax is only available if we build a new indoor stadium. It's not available otherwise. Um, the next bullet point um, uh, describes that 100% of the sales tax from inside the building um, would be committed to pay for um, the construction cost. And then the next bullet point is um, there's going to be a 130 approximately acre area around the football stadium and um, half the sales tax generated from that area um, would go to support the stadium. This one is probably where there's the most unknown. Um, first of all, how big is 130 acres over there? And it's basically everything between the two bridges, James Robertson and Korean veterans from the river to the interstate, that's about 100 acres. So the area that will capture sales tax will be somewhat bigger than that area uh, between the bridges and the river and the interstate. And um, you might say, well, Bob, um, that's exactly $0 of sales tax because it's all parking lot and right now. Um, and that's really the core of how this gets paid for is the intention is to build a new urban neighborhood with high rises in that 100, 130 acre area around the stadium. And so there would be sales tax generated from the area once that new neighborhood is built. Um, and, and half of that will get captured um, to help pay for the stadium. And then the last two are about um, ticket tax. Um, there's been a $3 ticket tax um, in place for about a decade um, for events that happen at Nissan Stadium with a couple of exclusions. It, it, the tax doesn't apply to TSU games um, and it doesn't apply where tickets are given away. Um, but anything that's uh, for uh, consideration, pay for the tickets, that tax has been getting charged. The proposal um, would add another $3 per ticket for all non-NFL events. So if you if the new stadium gets built and it's five years from now, for your Titans tickets, you'll pay $3 per ticket. If you go see um, Taylor Swift at a concert, you'll pay $6 a ticket. That's the proposal. Um, Okay, and then the last two bullet points really are um, where some of the unknowns are. Um, for the $840 million that the Titans are going to come up with, um, the exact breakdown between the various ways that they're going to um, provide money, we don't know that. Um, there's, uh, um, from what I hear in the community, um, some people argue who cares where they come up with it as long as they come up with their $840 million, that's fine. Other people, um, especially uh, season ticket holders, want to know how much of that's going to come from uh, personal seat licenses. And I, I think 
There are others that just want to know how much money the, the Titans actually have in it. Um, you know, the, people might feel differently if um, 100 million of the 840 is coming from the actual ownership or whether all of it was coming from ownership. Um, and again, some people um, are indifferent to that. Um, all right, next slide. Um, it is really, really important to understand that um, there's a hu huge difference on this proposed deal compared to every other stadium deal the city's ever done. Every other stadium, the baseball, soccer, existing football stadium, Bridgestone, have all been designed to generate enough tax revenue to pay for construction. And here, this deal is expressly designed to create a bunch of what the term she calls excess financing revenues. Um, and the idea is to um, generate enough money to pay for construction, that $2.1 billion, plus the next several decades of improvements um, to the new building, plus infra infrastructure for the su that surrounding 100 acres, uh, because right now there's no roads electricity, any water, sewer over there, and, and there will be substantial cost for that. And so the um, amount of the excess revenues, we, we don't know those right now. Um, and um, and, and the, the mayor's office says when final documents come to us in a few months, we'll get the details of the financing plan. Some people would prefer to know it now. Um, a couple details that are new um, to the council that you can find in a Q&A um, that's on the web page is these revenue sources, these tax revenue sources, um, according to a financial projection from the city, will generate about $2.9 billion worth of tax revenue over 30 years. And um, I just uh, you know, used uh, Excel to figure out what, what is the um, cost to pay for the bonds on $760 million worth of bonds. And that comes out to about $1.3 billion. So there's a difference between the revenue sources expected to generate $2.9 billion, according to the mayor's office projection, and the bonding costs should be a little less than half of that. And um, that just drives home the point of substantial excess revenue is going to be accumulated to help pay for the surrounding neighborhood and for um, future improvements of the football stadium. Um, but beyond that, we're, we're not able to um, give you any more details about that um, at this time. They're not available to us. And then the last couple things we don't know yet is the um, the city has to provide 2,000 parking spaces, um, and I think the best thinking right now is there will be some stacked parking garages somewhere in that 100 acres. Uh, Metro will need to pay for that. And then the um, stadium, village, and campus infrastructure, we don't have a lot of details about um, what that cost would be or um, uh, who exactly will pay for some of it. Um, all right. So moving on off the numbers into like, what does it look like? Where is it? Um, the next slide is a illustration um, from the planning department that shows, um, if you're familiar with the area, the current stadium is in, in near where the grassy area is shown in the middle and the stadium will move farther away from the river um, toward the interstate. This is um, just an illustration from the planning department, not meant to um, be definitive. It just gives you an idea of the uh, going from a parking lot intensive area to an urban neighborhood. Um, the planning department's drawings for this have shown that most or all of these buildings would be taller than the football stadium. So really think about it as a, um, you know, the height of buildings in say Midtown or the Gulch, um, not quite as tall as downtown probably, um, I think, um, but, but definitely a, a dense urban neighborhood there. Next four slides are all pictures from the Titans architects. Um, there's a first um, a exterior shot at night and, and off to the right there, you can see um, a rendition of a, a building taller than the stadium. Um, I've asked, and I, I, I wanna, I, I believe the stadium is intended to be about eight or so stories tall. And so the building shown there off to the right is taller than that, just to give you an idea of scale. 
The next picture um, is meant to show um, the outside gathering spaces that the Titans intend to have for a new stadium. Um, they've talked about uh, making the facility more accessible uh, on a week-to-week -week basis than the current stadium is. Next is a drawing of the inside during a football game. And then finally, um, what it might look like for a concert. Um, and uh, we've heard that the seating capacity, because the, the field could be used for seating, would be higher for um, concerts. Um, I've, I've heard some questions about how many times per year could there be concerts of 60 plus thousand. And I, I think that's, uh, um, we, I don't think we've got um, concrete information on that um, because we don't have crystal balls to know what's going to happen in the future. Um, the next uh, four slides, um, which are the final four slides, go through a couple of non-monetary topics that the, our committee has gotten information about. And for both, I would ask you to get this presentation from the committee webpage, and you can click on the presentation, watch the videos of our meetings, and decide for yourself um, about how to interpret the information. First, um, this slide, the, the Titans have proposed a, a community benefits platform where they would uh, – uh, enter agreements with a variety of well-known nonprofits to to give back to the community um, even more than than they have been. Um, and there's a lot of information um, that they provided. If you follow that link at the top of the slide, um, the same day we heard from a group of community organizations that felt that the um, Titans approach. Um, uh, wasn't transparent or inclusive or enforceable enough and that there wasn't anything um, that would require the team to provide um, the various benefits that they were talking about. Um, I would, uh, our committee recommends that you all follow these links, watch the video of our meeting and you can decide for yourself. And then finally, we, we heard two speakers about the economic impact um, generally. Um, on having a football stadium. We heard from uh, Butch Spearden at the Nashville Convention and Visitors Corporation who told us, this is just one, one of the slides, um, he had uh, information, quotes from uh, various folks, including the NFL and WrestleMania and other groups um, about what a big difference it would make to have an enclosed stadium. And I, I heard uh, somebody earlier this evening talk about um, uh, their experience going to the game yesterday and uh, uh, they, they wished it was indoors um, because the weather was uh, not that great and, and the team was not that, uh, <laughs> was pretty cold yesterday too. Um, and then finally, we had another speaker who is a, a PhD economist, um, an academic economist who made the argument that um, their uh, the academic information is that there is not a return on investment um, for public investment in stadiums. And again, um, we've got the links to both presentations. There's a video online. Um, you all can take a look at that and decide for yourself which side of that you stand on. Um, so that's the presentation. We're going to move on to the public comment session now. Again, you'll have three minutes each. Our timers are over there. When you get down to 30 seconds, you'll get yellow. Um, and uh, appreciate every coming out. Um, we're we're um, not doing Q&A because, uh, frankly, we came here to hear what you all think, and we've got a lot of information online. If there's some question that hasn't been answered um, and you want to ask it, um, feel free to email all of us um, at councilmembers at nashville.gov or any of us individually. Um, uh, you can email me at bob.mendez at nashville.gov, um, and we'll be happy to answer questions. Uh, but tonight we're here to um, to listen to y'all. So uh, three minutes a pop. If you could say your name and address um, to start us off, that would be great. Thank you. Good evening and thank you, Stadium Committee. I really appreciate that you all are doing this. My name is Martha Carroll. Um, I live at 325 Gatewood Avenue in East Nashville, 37207. Um, sorry I didn't make one of the earlier ones, but I'm over COVID, so I came tonight. A um, long time ago, um, I dated a guy who loved to spend money, and the gifts were really wonderful, and it was a whole lot of fun, uh, until I realized he didn't know a thing about budgeting for priorities. So, lesson learned. 
Uh, in my mind, Na Nashville's being courted right now, and the boyfriend who's been around for a while is the Titan franchise, <laughs> along with their good buddy, the state legislature, and they're ready to spend a lot of money here. And it could be fun. The new stadium, I think, is gorgeous. Uh, fewer, more expensive seats, glass, great views, what's not to love? But what is the rush? Um, they're going to need our help. How much? Well, we don't really know that. So I don't know why we're hurrying to act now. Uh, it sounds like one of those late night infomercials where you got to act now or you won't have a chance later on. Uh, I don't think that's what's going on here. I think we're being rushed maybe because maybe it's not the greatest deal for Nashville. And let me tell you, I love watching Derrick Henry and I love football, but um, NFL stadiums that have been built in recent years have included pools and aquariums and luxury boxes and more, and it takes public money to make this happen. Um, what I understand from the little study that I've done is that that money is not generally reinvested in the community, in schools or roads, or what I care about most, affordable housing, uh, nor does it create new money. Um, the Econ Journal Watch, uh, I listened to a podcast from them on the ripple effect of a new stadium. And uh, what was being said is that those promised jobs, new opportunities, rarely revitalize the surrounding area. The profits don't rise. Business owners claim it hurts them on game days. In fact, a review of 20 years showed, and this was by economists, no substantial evidence that stadiums increase jobs, incomes, or revenues. Um, Economists who studied the matter have found no evidence of tangible increases in the local economy, um, minimal at best. So um, they're moving uh, economic activity around rather than creating new activity. I guess the final thing I want to say is, has the council really done its homework? Because I know you all have, but it just seems like the evidence is out there in journals and podcasts, et cetera, uh, that, uh, and I don't think Nashville's going to be the exception to this. So um, I hope that the council will just figure it out and do the right thing. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Good afternoon, members of council. Uh, appreciate y'all coming out to our neck of the woods out here in Hermitage. My name is Jordan Huffman. Uh, I live at 1048 Riverwood Village Boulevard, just right up the road. Uh, I'm the president of the Donaldson Hermitage Neighborhood Alliance. Uh, I'm also a board member at Neighbor to Neighbor. I've uh, been seeing a, a lot of the same feedback over and over. I'm hoping to, to shake it up a little bit for you. Uh, I'm speaking tonight on behalf of the residents of this community uh, and our local neighborhood organizations that still have some lingering questions uh, about this deal as a whole. And it really boils down to this. We're tired of seeing investment after investment into our downtown corridor with seemingly no benefit to the people that live here. I'm not doubting that this deal has the potential to be lucrative for Nashville, but I have yet to see anyone from Metro government, from the stadium authority, whoever, to discuss the cons. And that, as the previous speaker stated, should be a red flag to everybody. No deal is a perfect deal. Look at the one we made 25 years ago, just as an example. Uh, a few things to consider. Uh, we're going to have increased traffic on our roads, which is going to be really hard on all of us here. Uh, it's also going to increase crime. Those of us that live in Hermitage are all too familiar with, with those issues. And as we sit here tonight, we're in a police precinct where the officers that work here stretch from their coverage area all the way downtown to Antioch, all the way to Wilson County, and all the way past Old Hickory. With crime already threatening our communities, where is the investment from this deal to keep us safe? Uh, last point that I'll make, recession. We don't really hear anything talking about this, but this a recession could cause a major setback with this project from a monetary standpoint. And is there a contingency plan? It would be a great thing to know. 
for, whether you're for or against this deal, uh, I think everybody in this room tonight can agree on, on one thing. And if it is, if we move forward with this deal, how do we make it not only profitable for the state, but for all of Nashvilleans? As I've said before, we've seen investment after investment made into Nashville for tourists. All we're asking for is an investment in us. And this is the largest publicly subsidized stadium deal in history. It should definitely benefit the public. So I ask each of you to please think about this, to take back to your colleagues and to find ways that we can find and, and focus on uh, putting revenue streams towards the problems that plague this city. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good evening, council members and uh, committee members as well. My name is Randy Brothers. I have the pleasure to serve as the president of the Donaldson Hermes Chamber of Commerce, and I'm representing the board of the Donaldson Hermes Chamber of Commerce with a prepared statement in, re in regards to the stadium. We, the board of the Donaldson Hermitage Chamber of Commerce, ask that you support a new stadium and lease agreement between the Tennessee Titans and Metro Nashville, Davidson County. Our membership includes more than 400 businesses entities that contribute to the local and regional economy of the greater Nashville area. We understand the impact the Titans have had on the city and region and appreciate the team's commitment to our community. As Nissan Stadium approaches the end of its useful life and its current lease terms propose, propose serious challenges for the city, we support the new vision for a new facility that can benefit all parties. The current lease is estimated 1.8 billion obligation represents a potential financial crisis for Davidson County, whereas a new stadium brings dramatic economic upside and will release Nashville taxpayers from a major liability. A new stadium and new lease terms will remove taxpayers from the stadium business, and the new stadium will yield numerous benefits, including the opportunity to serve as the crown jewel of a developing East Bank and continue Nashville's trajectory as one of the greatest cities in the United States, releasing Metro from a physical obligation under the current lease that is not possible to fulfill, and generating a return on investment that will supplement other critical city priorities. We urge you to carefully consider the options before you and move forward with a new stadium and more favorably lease terms for the Davidson County taxpayers, including those outside of the downtown core. We appreciate your leadership on this critical issue and look forward to the continued community impact and leg legacy of our beloved Titans. And I work at uh, 446 Metroplex Drive here in Nashville, Tennessee. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Good evening. My name is Beth McDaniels. I live at 2521 Pennington Bend Road, District 15. Uh, I'd like to thank you all for your time tonight. Um, and as an event individual uh, involved in the events and entertainment industry here in Nashville for the last 20 years, uh, this stadium makes sense for all involved. Uh, it will bring world-class events to our city, all while removing the financial burden from the current stadium from the taxpayers of Davidson County and allow those funds to go to other uses. Uh, Nashville will be able to bring in events, as you stated before, such as the Super Bowl, WrestleMania, other sporting events, citywide conventions, and all the best concerts year-round, not worrying about the weather, and we will remain a first-class city uh, for decades to come. Uh, I've also come armed with a handful of letters from other supporters, uh, constituents in the county that I'd like to leave with you all, and I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the lady that spoke first, I wanted to know if the boyfriend was single. <laughs> because any boyfriend that likes to spend money, I'm all about it. Uh, my name is Christy Driver, and uh, I call myself a unicorn because I am a native Nashvilleian that loves this city. And we continually see people moving here. Um, they're tourists first, and then they see how great we are, and they want to move here. So um, I grew up in Old Hickory. Um, I hate that uh, Councilman Roten wasn't here. He and I graduated high school from DuPont um, together, and I'm not going to tell you the year because he's old. Um, so I, I love the fact that this city has grown and evolved. I mean, I drive downtown and I see, oh, my God, where did that building come from? How can people afford to live there? 
That's really the truth. That's why I now live in Wilson County. Um, that probably shouldn't have mentioned that part, but um, so I am a founding PSL holder, me and my dad. Um, and I am now um, in the 23rd year of my hospitality career in Nashville. <clears throat> uh, we love tourists and tourists definitely love Nashville. They help pay my bills. So why shouldn't they help pay for a new stadium? Um, I believe it's a very smart financial decision. Um, the overall revenue that will be generated can go to the general fund for things like in infrastructure and education and hopefully affordable housing. Um, I want to tell a little bit about my generational Titan story. My dad and I, we, we had the white t-shirts with the blue and yellow NFL yes. And I looked for it, and I'm glad I couldn't find it because it wouldn't have fit this, this day and time, unfortunately. But we um, got our PSLs. We were there for the Music City Miracle. We were chosen as uh, lottery winners to go to the Super Bowl. I storm. My dad ended up having to fly down there. Um, but what a great memory that was for me. He, uh, his health deteriorated, and he passed away in 2014. But the memories I made with my dad at that place will never be forgotten. At his funeral, he was dressed in um, a Titans pullover with his favorite Super Bowl cap. And at the very end of it, I spoke and um, played the Music City Miracle radio broadcast. Um, so it's special moments like that that make me so proud of this city. And I hope that we can continue that in the future because you got to spend money to make money. Thanks. Thank you very much. Hey, good evening, everybody. My name is Jim Beckner. Uh, yes, Mr. Mendez, the same Jim Beckner that has emailed you maybe 75 times and you've answered all of them. Thank you. Um, I live in District 24. Uh, I am in support of the new Titans deal. I am not affiliated with the Titans, not affiliated with construction. I am I am a Titans fan, but I'm, I think I'm more concerned about the existing lease. I care a great deal about this city. Uh, the existing lease was a stadium deal only. Uh, it prohibited, you know, or impeded uh, development all across the land surrounding it. This new deal is a stadium deal, plus it reclaims land for Nashvillians, and it's giving us um, out of a lease that was voted on, but that doesn't mean it wasn't a bad decision of the lease itself. We all know if we build a new stadium, I think it will be the best fan experience in the country. That's not enough to move forward with this, in my opinion. The college football playoff is, is going to expand to 12 teams in 2024, meaning 11 cities will get a playoff game every year. Nashville will get one every year. That's not enough to move forward with this deal. CMA Fest will be expanded. Nashville will be on the rotation for a Super Bowl, WrestleMania, Final Four. That's great if you're a fan of downtown development. But for all of Nashvillians, that's, that's a great to have, not a, not a need to have. Much of what is wrong with today's Nashville is rightly being voiced in these forums. Affordable housing, metro pay, in particular teacher pay, job opportunities for minority and women-owned businesses, and transportation. This deal will not solve all of, Nash's, uh, all of Nashville's issues, but with respect to affordable housing, 66 acres will be reclaimed, and Metro has stated affordable housing for low AMIs will be built there. I don't want this land to be short-term rentals. I don't want it to be hotels. It needs to go to Nashvillians, and it's hard enough in this state to build affordable housing. To have affordable housing walking distance from downtown employment is a reason to move forward with this deal. At Geodas Park, nearly 70 million in contracts were awarded to 70 different minority and women of businesses. That leads to future job opportunities for them. Thanks to Sharon Hurt's council amendment, mandating minority and women owned business participation for this deal, which would be much more than 70 million, is another reason to move forward with this deal. With respect to General's Fund, this committee did state that 60 million is currently on the books of Metro that will be forgiven or covered by the Titans. That's a reason to move forward with this deal. The lease is vague on purpose with respect to what is the true cost of the renovation. Whether it's 400, 500, a billion, it doesn't matter. The only way that we can get out of that is have a 1% hotel tax 
on tourists for the new stadium. It is not for a renovation. Moving forward with this, um, voting on, on the resolution on December 20th is not approving the deal. There are questions that still need to be answered, but let's please keep moving forward. Please get us out of this lease. Thank you. So, Mr. Beckner. Hello, current council members. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you for hosting these series of meetings. Uh, my name is Brian Sexton. I live at 1633 Stokely Lane. I also just wrapped up my term as vice president of the Cleveland Hall Neighborhood Association. Um, I have taken the time to do my own research uh, and really chisel down to what I felt was important and what was factual. And I actually believe that this is a fair proposal. Uh, I like the proposal for two reasons. One, that it does provide some level of relief from our current tax obligation um, as uh, shared. And also, I do, uh, as a gentleman stated, I do like the fact that as part of the proposal, Metro will, re will receive several acres back, uh, acres of land back for small businesses, for affordable housing. Um, and it, again, it, is, it has been my stance, which I've, I've said time and time again, that I don't believe the Titans are affordable housing developers. They can contribute to the solution and that's what they're doing. They've done that. Uh, but I think our affordable housing challenge as a city is something that it goes way beyond the Tennessee Titans. I think that's a shared responsibility as you all very well know. That's a shared responsibility across all of our stakeholder uh, landscape. So I do uh, believe that this is a fair proposal after doing my own research. Uh, and I do believe uh, it, it's a good deal. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Hi, I'm Rachel Ricker. I live at 753 Mill Creek Meadow Drive, and I'm a proud seventh generation Nashvilleian and the proud daughter of a dad who's never once missed a Titans football home game. So the Titans mean a lot to me, um, and they mean a lot to this city. After college, I returned to Nashville because it was a thriving city, and it was an important decision for me to live in Davidson County. I currently reside in Donaldson, just eight minutes from the center of downtown, and I'm a proud owner of Titans season tickets, and I'm invested in how important professional sports teams are for a city. I love Nashville and the energy, and I want to keep it moving forward. I strongly support a new enclosed stadium for Nashville, and I ask that you vote in favor of the proposal. The current lease agreement is not a great deal for taxpayers like me. Renovation would be expensive for taxpayers, and I support shifting the burden of costs away from our city's general fund and to the Tennessee Titans slash NFL state funding and visitors through the 1% hotel occupancy tax increase and sales taxes collected at the stadium surrounding campus. I'm excited about the prospect of returning valuable land around the stadium for green space, affordable housing, and transit as the city undertakes thoughtful redevelopment of the East Bank. I know that an enclosed stadium will generate increased economic activity for not only local businesses, but also for our city as we attract major events like the Super Bowl, Final Four, college football playoffs, and even WrestleMania. Your support is a 30-year decision that will shape the future of Nashville in a unique and positive way. Look at the way the Titans have helped this community the last 23-ish plus years and think about how much more they can do to support the community with a new stadium. I urge you to vote in support of the stadium deal and all it would do to continue making Nashville a great place to live, work, be entertained, and visit. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks a lot. Good evening, current council members. Uh, my name is Ryan Finnerty. Uh, my home address is 753 Mill Creek Meadow Drive. Um, I'll keep this pretty brief. Uh, I guess I'm a unicorn uh, as well, Nashville resident, and have been all my life. For the last 24 years, Titans have always been at the forefront of our community and have made a tremendous impact both on and off the field. Uh, the enclosed stadium does make sense to me as the city grows to con uh, grow, continues to grow and thrive. I support the project uh, and ask that you please vote in support of the stadium as well. Thanks. Thank you very much. My name is Mickey Sullivan. I live at 2809 Lealto Court, which is in Donaldson. <clears throat> Uh, and thanks to you all for being here tonight and listening to us and the transparency that you referred to earlier through which this process has been conducted. So thanks for that. Uh, I am also in support of the stadium deal, but my part that uh, intrigues me the most is it comes from my background as an engineer working with the development community. So when we have, uh, whether it's 56 or 66 or how many acres it's going to be, the Metro has control of, and they'll develop through a master developer. Uh, 
I think that could be pretty powerful. The economic development that that could drive is really important. And based on the master plan, this, the city has gone through that process and the things that they intend to include in this area where they develop, the Spine Road, the uh, Linear Park uh, plans for housing and other mixed uses, I think are gonna have a tremendous impact. I have firsthand knowledge of things that other projects downtown like Nashville Yards, which is 25% of what this property is. And the economic impact of that, just think of that four times that could happen around this stadium. So for that reason, I'm in favor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. I would um, echo the thanks for hearing our thoughts tonight. My name is Katie Wiley. I'm a resident at 1431 Meridian Street in East Nashville. Um, my neighbor spoke earlier today, and I know she mentioned concern about rushing too quickly into a project like this. In fact, I would like to offer that now is the perfect time to do so. Um, I'm a passionate East Nashville resident that feels that we have a long way to come in terms of developing our community. I think the neighborhood and the city, as we all know, are changing, and I'm in favor in supporting the stadium um, and getting out of our current lease agreement, which feels a bit like a liability for the residents of Nashville. From my understanding, um, this new stadium is being primarily funded by the tourists and those that use the facility, I of which am one of those people. I know I personally would happily pay a bit more um, to have a positive experience with the expectation that the excess revenue generated is then funneled back into our community. I echo the sentiments about the importance of affordable housing, having been through the process of trying to find a home or a long-term rental in the Nashville community. Um, and I know our councilman is committed to creating that in um, the surrounding area around Nissan stadium. I also moved to Nashville from a community that did develop a stadium and so I hear and understand a lot of the concerns that have been raised here tonight. Um, I will say that I had a particularly positive experience. There was a neighborhood that I came from that had excellent development and growth and positive outcomes for all of the community members involved. So with that being said, I emphasize the importance of moving forward with this resolution and considering um, the development of the new stadium. Thanks. Thank you. Hi, my name is Brian Huff, and I'm a resident, uh, 2753 Alvin Sperry Pass, uh, resident of Mount Juliet, but a sliver of my slivers in Davidson County. And I really appreciate your time today to uh, visit us here to let us express our concerns or support. And I am uh, a 20 year resident, moved here from Orlando, Florida in 2002, uh, lived in Davidson County my whole time here in Nashville. and. Uh, have really seen the city grow and excited about where it's going. And I do support uh, the stadium. I think it will bring a lot of economic revenue to the locals and also will increase values in general of home values. And um, I just want to show my support and I think bringing, having uh, the stadium will bring more, uh, more uh, larger events to this to the city and uh, sorry i'm a little nervous <laughs> take take <laughs> your time just want to express my support so thank you thanks for coming out tonight thank you good evening first uh my name is tabir tabor i'm the president of tennessee kurdish community council uh we have the largest kurdish community here in nashville well over twenty thousand Kurds reside in nashville uh the Kurds moved to the moved to Nashville in late uh, in early nineties, and then the second wave of Kurds arrived in Nashville in late nineties, roughly around the same time uh, the Yes campaign from the NFL that recruited the Titans, and it was very successful. Shortly after that, Titans reached its first Super Bowl. Uh, Titans it means a lot for our uh, community. Coming from a third world country that had no hope, that had, were always on the run from wars, from, you know, oppression. When we first came here, Titans and our community has so much in common. I, I feel like we both came to the city around the same time. It gave us an eye opening, a something to watch and something to entertain. Uh, we are greatly appreciated of Titans organization. And one thing we all have to know that we're supposed to, you know, th thank and be humble for this team because Amy Strong, she can easily say, hey, goodbye, I'm moving somewhere else. 
And then what? The Titans have impacted so many communities. This new stadium will not only benefit the Titans organization, they will only play a few games in a year. That's all. But the rest of it, we, the community, will, will benefit from it. Uh, my organization, uh, we, ho we host the, the biggest event uh, in Nashville in and, and every March of 21st. It is our Kurdish New Year. But because we don't have a place, you know, to host this event in an outdoor, we always have to go to Wilson County just for different parks to host our events. I believe with this new stadium, the tennis signs, they will offer many community opportunities. Not only for my community, but for every underserved community. So I'm sure there are other priorities in Nashville that needs to be talked about, but I'm sure this team will. And one lastly, I, I want to say, the Titans have uh, implemented so many opportunities. Um, one simple one, that I wanna, the latest one, Destin Project. It's an opportunity Titans, they're offering, not only for my community, but for many, many others. And lastly, I want to say, why should we, the public, be responsible for the constructions and for the maintenance of, of the current stadium? The new stadium deal, it will free us from that. Thank you, and we're here to support it. I'm, I'm asking our city leaders to support this project as well. Thank you. Thanks very much. Yeah. My name is Richard Hoffman. I live at 4240 Old Hickory Boulevard in Old Hickory, Tennessee. I'm not really for a, a, a new deal as much so much as, as get us out of the old stuff. The, the development agreement sucked when it was done. The lease sucked when it was done. The, the actual taxpayers of Davidson County, whether it be property tax or sales tax, is getting no benefit out of either one of these deals. The development that is proposed within this new deal is mostly residential. So if the, if the, the sales tax generated off of residential, there is no sales tax. So how is it going to go to pay the bond? Now, granted, y'all did an excellent job of providing the information within your one website. The links to the state laws that regard the sports authority and that, that's mentioned within the question and answers that y'all posted is not linked in there. So a lot of things that, that the sports authority was supposed to be able to do under the development agreement, the development agreement included Metro National Government. All the bonds and stuff are technically supposed to be under sports authority. So the taxpayers is sales tax, not property tax. The general obligation under the development was, but either way that we're, we're, we're as, as the citizens of Davis County, we're not benefiting. Is, is, is the proposed development going to be tax incentive financing? Is, is, is the, 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 the housing, Where's, where's the revenue from the sale of property from the Juvenile Justice Center going to go? That's Metro property. It's not Sports Authority property. The parking lot across the street, where's that revenue going to go? How did the development agreement go from 102 acres to 125 acres? There's a lot, a lot of questions. And when people say, we got to do it now, when you got to do it now, you got to do it now. There's something that's not right. I suggest everybody just slow down and look at the total economics. If the Titans wanted to make this a game day experience at the stadium, then what happens to the sales tax revenue from everybody going downtown that's contributing to the tourist development zone paying for the Music City Center? If that revenue's lost at all the honky tonks and everything downtown because everybody wants a full game day experience at the stadium, who makes up that loss? There's a lot of questions. More and more questions than there is answers coming from pretty much everybody. So I would say that just kind of slow down and let's look at the total economics of it before anybody passes it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Hi, I'm a concerned citizen who lives in Nashville. Um, 
And I would like to implore the council to reject this deal. Um, I think that the people who are pushing this deal would never actually accept anything resembling this if they were the ones footing the bill themselves, um, simply because of the lack of information and the many unknowns. It kind of feels like um, planned obsolescence where, you know, when you have like a newer iPhone and then the new iPhone comes out and all of a sudden your iPhone starts acting up for no reason when you get the update and it's like this phone was fine, like right before they announced a new iPhone that they want you to buy. But, you know, let's just throw our phone away and go ahead and, and lock ourselves into another deal with our phone carrier. And it it's very similar, like all of a sudden now this stadium is dilapidated. Now it's unusable. Um, and people talk about economic growth in support of this. Um, they talk about jobs, but they never talk about like what kind of jobs that they're offering. I mean, if you're going to put a whole new slew of wage slave jobs like out, that's not really improving the economic conditions of people in Nashville. Are these union jobs? Are you contracting union workers for the construction? We don't know. So there's not much detail on how this necessarily benefits the working and poor class of Nashvilleians and not just people who can afford season passes. Um, I think that we also don't know how much of the revenue generated from this is actually able to contribute to the general fund. And if any of you know that answer, I would definitely love to know um, because that's also not clear. Like, can this money actually go back to the general fund? Um, and I think that community development is not charity. It is through letting working people have the means to sustain themselves and their communities. I don't think anyone needs handouts and especially not billionaires. No one even has money for like these world-class events that we're talking about. Like the recession is here, but it's only worsening. We, we are not seeing a period of economic growth that would even like make any substantial claims that this stadium is going to like produce something of value to us. Um, I don't know anyone, if, if anyone in this room has money for like a really good ticket for a football game right now in their bank account, like, please let me know because I don't think a majority of working Nashvilleans do. Um, we don't know what nonprofits or what is, what is the selection process of nonprofits that are going to benefit the community? Like who decides what nonprofits are benefiting the community? Um, and if they need to find money for this project, I don't think that's a problem. But I also looked into who owns the Tennessee Titans, and it's actually a family controlled, privately owned and privately traded company with a single family. I don't know what assets they have. So what demonstrated need do they have for this money? And yet we're chomping at the bit to throw billions of dollars at them. It doesn't really make sense. They have the connections. The NFL has the connections and sponsorships with very lucrative companies that are more than willing to help them fund this project. Why do taxpayers need to foot the bill? Um, and here's a list of NFL stadiums that Thank were you. actually Thank funded without much. taxpayer Your dollars. FedEx Stadium, is, uh, Hard Rock, Gillette Stadium, MetLife Stadium, and SoFi Stadium. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Um, I kind of want to talk to everybody uh, and thank you for speaking the way you just did. Um, I've heard a couple of people here talk about having, st what is it, uh, season passes, things like that. Um, and just like she just said, like, who can afford that? You know, we're talking about jobs that don't really impact people's lives. If we're talking about 15 hours away, we're talking about homelessness right on the other end. That's a really fragile living. Um, and if it's not clear as to what kind of jobs that are being provided, are we perpetuating what's going on and just looking for more people to lock up and ship to Florida or to whatever other place? Or are we actually, you know, building a system that brings people out? Um, it's, not a, it's not a situation of handouts. It is a situation of we've set the playing field and made somebody else figure it out. Um, but yeah, and I, I, one thing I couldn't find through the website was, you know, just like tracking how the community benefits agreement has gone with the, uh, the soccer stadium. Um, I, I'm really curious, like, how has that impacted folks? How many people have had to leave? How many people are working jobs where they feel like they're thriving and surviving? Um, if you don't know, it, and it's an outdated calculator, but the MIT calculator for Nashville says the uh, living wage is like 1760. Um, and that, yeah, I think that's outdated. And it says the thriving wage, you know, where you have benefits and like you're actually able to save and, you know, afford to move around here um, and not have to budget your gas. You know, some people can't even afford to get here, but to show up to this event, which impacts them. But um, it's about 33 an hour that people need. So for these jobs that we're bringing in people, you know, we call it skilled labor and non-skilled labor. Um, looking at who these people who own this stadium, you know, what kind I don't know, why aren't they here? 
Um, but yeah, anyways, I've spoken before, and it's been cool to hear and speak, hear some people speak again and again at these meetings. I think it's awesome, that, like what we're doing here, and having that speech. But I, I think stewardship and you know just taking that time is like the most important thing. And if you can exemplify that, and you know, there's no such thing as like writing; it's only rewriting. We got to redraft this, and I think that people will be. Uh, I think people would appreciate that. Anyways, have a good one. Thank you very much. Thank you for doing this. And luckily, I was sick earlier, and I finally made it to this one. So um, my name is Pat McDonald. I live at 414 Fieldcrest Drive. That is in Creve Hall. Now, I've spent my entire career and my retirement trying to work for people in this city who do not have what a lot of people here obviously do. I, I, one of the questions I sent in is, how many people in Nashville actually have season passes to the Titans game? I don't know how many people in Williamson County have them, how many people in Wilson County have them. I'd like to know how many people in Nashville have tickets, season tickets to the Titans game. It's a minuscule percentage of this population. And the majority of people cannot afford Titans tickets. I do not have Titans tickets. I love football. It's by choice. That's not how my family spends its money. But it's okay if that's how your family spends your money. But most people don't have that money. And the one thing I'm concerned about, I'm not convinced. I keep, I have, I'm on the Affordable Housing Committee of NOAA as is my following person. She's the chair of the committee. Um, I haven't heard anything yet that convinces me that any of the tax, there's going to be tax money removed from the outer sections of Davidson County because this, uh, this tax, this stadium, the taxes are going right to that area. We don't get them out in this surrounding area. So I haven't been convinced that we're not going to be negatively impacted by the taxes. It's really the, the numbers are so difficult. And I have watched every one of your committee meetings online. I've, I watch most of the affordable housing committees online, and I appreciate that. I really appreciate having the opportunity to get that information. But I'm still not convinced that this is going to be any kind of bargain for those people in this community who cannot afford Titans tickets. Thank you. Thank you very much. Just a side note, she's a retired data analyst and a good example of uh, as a citizen that is intent on performing civic duty. So we appreciate having Pat with us. I'm Kay Bowers and live at 4033 Albert Drive. I'm concerned about the financial opportunity cost of a new stadium, the surrounding village, and other important associated costs that have not been lined out the way I believe they should be for the public. Before Metro Council votes, I'd like to feel confident that you have all the financial information needed <clears throat> to make informed decisions, demonstrate accountability to the constituents, and give us confidence uh, that you're paying attention to the public purse. The stadium project stands to become the most expensive in the NFL funded by public dollars. By contrast, 86% of the Atlanta Falcon Stadium was funded by private funds. What if we shifted our percentage and made this more funds coming from private funds and fewer funds coming from public dollars? Our hospitality businesses say they have a severe shortage, <clears throat> excuse me, of needed staff. Recent conversations with downtown Marriott management state that they have a staffing shortage of 30%. Why would a development model include adding more of these businesses when our worker shortage, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I test negative, is so severe? It doesn't make economic sense to me. Who's asking the question, what type of jobs are needed? What do they pay? 
And can the workers afford to live near their jobs? In the span of a year, over 12, up, almost 12,000 people left Nashville. We had 8,000 come in, so at a net loss of 4,000. Uh, and there are reports on this. So if the affordability challenge for our workers continues to rise, I don't know where you're gonna get your workers that you want to serve people. Question, shouldn't council have a full breakdown of the cost, including campus costs and, and a detailed funding plan that has stood up to good due diligence? How much will it cost for the village, campus infrastructure, parking spaces, and campus repair funds? The stadium's financing plan re uh, relies on future taxes captured in a surrounding neighborhood that we don't have yet. What's the projected cost and timeline to develop that neighborhood? I, I'd like to ask our council members to slow down, ensure that you and we, the public, get answers to critical financial questions to b before making your final decision. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bowers. Good evening, council. Good evening. Thank you all for being here. My name is Aron Thompson. I live at 612 Rivercrest Way. Um, the proposed stadium will be a game changer for not just the Titans, but for the East Bank and the whole community. The stadium makes sense for all those involved, all the while continuing to make Nashville a first-class city. I myself consider myself a Nashvillian, now being here for more than 15 years. Um, I've watched the city continue to grow, and as an architect, it is extremely cool, but also mostly needed. When I moved here, I lived downtown. Um, and back when I lived downtown, there was nothing there. There wasn't any cool grocery store. There wasn't any um, a nice, cool venue, a family-friendly venue or anything like that. Um, and as I grew and my family ended up growing, we moved out here to Donaldson. As we moved out here to Donaldson, um, we watched Donaldson also continue to get some of that development and continue to grow. That included things like a brand new Publix, um, now having a centralized location downtown in Donaldson. Um, and so watching that growth in that area, why should any other part of Nashville be spared? Understanding that there's growth that needs to happen in the city and understanding that that growth is going to happen, we should all be supportive of that. Why would we ever block growth for any, of the, any other parts of the city? The old lease itself is bad and providing a way out is always a good idea. Metro will receive back hundreds of acres of land to be utilized to develop a brand new neighborhood where the, and include affordable housing as part of it. I support the new proposed stadium and I hope that you all will do, to, do the same. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good evening, council. Thank you for being here. My name is Don Harden. I'm a native Nashvilleian. Uh, I grew up in Trinity Hills uh, in, in uh, Northwest Nashville. Not sure if you know where that is, but it's, it's what we call the hood, okay? Uh, I consider myself a success story. Why is that? Because I chose to go in the field of construction, architectural engineering and construction. Now, when we built the Music City Center, we were worried that we, didn't have, we wouldn't have people here to, to fill those jobs. Music City Center was a big investment at the time, and now the Titans are another step. But what did the Music City Center teach us? Well, as a, as a manager on that job, we literally hired people from Tent City. Nobody talks about that. We, we've literally been able to watch our employees get their first home in the city doing construction. When this, when, as the city has grown, now there are available jobs and development has definitely helped us. I know it's challenging to see development happen but it's created a lot of construction jobs. Those jobs in turn bring food to families. They can buy their new homes. They can raise their kids in whatever area they are. And sure, we fight with, with wages. And the Titans have committed that they will exceed the normal wages that uh, you know, workers would get. And we're going to challenge others who are vendors to the Titans to do the same. So I ask you to, I urge you to support this, this uh, endeavor and watch the city grow even further. And for those who really wonder where the jobs are, who's going to get the jobs, feel free to call my office. We'll tell you all about it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 
Hi, um, Nicole Williams. I live in District 20. Thank you for being here tonight. Um, I want to start by saying that I am not philosophically opposed to a new stadium. Um, what I am opposed to is being gaslit and being played. And that's what the administration and the team is doing to all of us right now. Like the current lease sucks. I get that. We all get that. With that in mind, I see a few options. One, renegotiate the current lease. I've watched almost all of the meetings about this topic, and I don't think I've seen the team ever have to answer the simple question of whether they're willing to renegotiate the current lease. I mean, they're not. Why would they be? <laughs> but to not even have to answer that question is bonkers to me. Uh, we're told they're an incredible community partner. We're told that they just want what's best for Nashville, and they really, really want to rip up the current lease. So what's stopping them? Um, if all that is true, they must have at least considered renegotiation. Two, call their bluff. Again, if the Titans love Nashville so much, they will do what they can to stay here. And if they don't, I wish them the best of luck in literally any other city. Um, <laughs> and I firmly believe, based on economic impact data, not just vibes, that Nashville will survive without them. And the third option is... Let them have what they want with little to no pushback. That seems to be the tactic that council is most interested in at the moment, um, which tells me that TJ Ducklow and James Weaver should be getting paid more than they already are. Um, because to any casual observer, it is so obvious that you are being played. Exhibit A, the VSG study. You specifically asked for the cost to renovate the current stadium to comply with the lease. You got something completely different. They sat there and lied to your faces about it. And... Everyone seems to have just moved on from that. Like, oh, well, no use crying over $315,000 worth of spilled milk. Exhibit B, the arrogance of this administration. Um, we'll use Ben Eagles as an example here. That man got on television and said, well, no council member has provided an alternative proposal. And then he smirked. That should offend you. That offends me for you. Um, that's not your job to provide an alternative proposal. It's their job to do that. It's their job to answer your questions. It's their job to get a good deal for Nashville. And it's your job to provide oversight for that. Um, exhibit C, Amy Adams Strunk just paid somewhere between 14 and $18 million for a few hundred acres of land in Franklin. This from the family that is supposedly doing a fire sale of their assets so they can come to the table with as much invested as humanly possible in this deal. Ultimately, it's probable that what we've got on the table right now is a better deal than the current lease. But I find it highly unlikely that it's the best deal. And with all the spin and the games and the BS, like it's just really hard to believe that this is the best possible deal. If it was such a great deal, they wouldn't have to play the games. They would just be able to make the case to us that it is a good deal. Um, so I encourage you to push the administration and the team for that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, my name is Jim Worth, live over here in the Bonas, and uh, basically, I think we just need to slow way down. Not opposed to it, but slow way, way down. I think the city is just, it's like, boom, let's build the stadium, 2.1 billion. We're at a food pantry over here. About a year ago, we were getting about 15 cars every Wednesday night for food boxes and stuff. We're hitting over 50 now. These people don't have food. I got two friends right now, they're getting kicked out of their apartment because they can't afford to rent. We give them these yellow packets to go to the city to get help. They're on a waiting list. The city's on a waiting list. I mean, they're, they're, we're not helping the poor. I get people on the streets out here. So I think, you know, down the road maybe. But I don't think the city or the state even needs to decide. It needs to be people of Tennessee to go and vote on this thing once we get more information on it. Billions of dollars is too much. We could be putting in affordable housing helping people with food, getting money for their apartments to live. There are people that are literally dying on the street. I'm seeing it every day. We got a bad economy right now, and we're pushing this thing through really, really fast and too quick. Last thing I'll say, tragically, by the time this gets built, everybody in the council is going to be gone and out. We're going to have a whole new administration, a whole new mayor, and they're all going to look back and say, oh, they did it. They did it. So I'm saying, hold back. Because they're going to blame you guys for this. When, they're, when you guys are gone, the new mayor comes in, they're blaming you guys for this. And we as a taxpayer are going to get hit with it. 
I can promise you that. Thank you. Thanks very much. Jamie Holland, 1006 Fogland Street. Councilman Hager, it's good to see you and good to see some hair sprouting back up there. <laughs> I'm going to pull on that thread first class condition. You know, I've been pulling on it before. It's defined by 30 other NFL cities and their teams and their facilities. I heard somebody mention earlier the 96 lease sucked. I, would, I, I don't disagree. So we don't have a say. We literally have a co contractual obligation to keep up with the Joneses, including Jerry. I know we hate that. Don't take my word for it. Two law firms in town working on this deal. Ask them. They're obligated to tell you the truth, even though somebody else is paying. Listening to the introduction, one might believe that we get to decide what our tab is. We don't. The Joneses of the world who keep setting the bar higher and higher, they're determining that. Not the mayor, not the council, not anybody else. We're obligated. That's the reality of the deal that was cut in 1996, for better or worse. As far as slowing down, everybody says, oh, slow down. Metro stopped meeting its obligations under the lease in at least 2017. Slowing down only speeds up the problem. Thanks. Thanks very much. Good evening. Uh, my name is Ariel Hughes. I live in Cherry Creek, just down the road. Um, I wanted to come tonight as a resident of Hermitage, but also as someone who was actually born in Nashville in 1990. Um, this is fundamentally wrong. If you're in a relationship and you can't get out, that's abuse. We should be running for the hills from this. Um, I don't personally understand why it is that every time a billionaire has needs something or wants something of the city, we just bow down to them. But you know, the Titans aren't going to help me pay my, any of my bills. They're not going to help me pay my NES bill. Why do I have to pay for their expenses? My advice to them would be the same advice that's been given to me, you know, hundreds of times, I'm sure. Um, I'm one of the Nashvillians that lives above the average medium income here. Um, so I've never been to a Titans game. I mean, I can't afford it. Titans tickets, a pair of tickets would cost what I spend on groceries. Um, this is not something that's going to affect all of Nashville for a large percentage of your city. This is a resource or a benefit that's completely unavailable to them. Please don't forget that. And, you know, maybe the Titans should spend less and save more. Thank you very much. Hi. 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 Anybody else who wants to speak, come on up in line. Uh, my name's Jeff Schnelli. I live uh, on Willow Bow Lane in Old Hickory, down the street from Larry, as a matter of fact. So um, I would just urge caution on this. As a suburban liver in Nashville since 1979, I don't really feel like I've derived any benefit from these deals that we make. They seem expensive, not just stadium deals. This will be the second one, but deals before that to, to lure big businesses here. Um, it feels to me like the cost side of the equation never gets measured uh, in terms of traffic, congestion, the inability of roads and streets repaired, replaced, cost of living, uh, the time you spend in your car away from your family, all those things are real costs. And I don't feel like I've ever gotten any benefit. You know, every four years, except for four years ago, or a few years ago, we got we had a tax increase. So I don't feel like it mitigates the property tax requirement of Nashvillians. Um, so I think you need to weigh it all. And, and don't just think, there's a lot of benefits to this deal but they accrue to a very small portion of the population, I think, not to the general population. Um, and I think we need to look at deals that really truly do accrue to all of us. Both my kids did studies, one in college, one in graduate school, about the impact of um, 
NFL, of the NFL and large sporting events in, in town, and you referred to these as academic studies. Well, the academic said, always move the decimal place one point to the left when you're talking about the NFL in big sporting events, Olympics, big wrestling things, any kind of stuff like that, always move it, not to the right, move it to the left. Just something to think about. Thanks very much for being here tonight. Thank you, sir. Hi, my name is Zach Likens. I live at 1211 North 6th Street in East Nashville. Thank you so much for opening up spaces like this where we can uh, share our points of view. And thank you so much to everyone who's shared their point of view tonight. I feel like I've learned a lot. Uh, I followed along, I've, I've read a lot of your pieces. And I, after everything that I've read and heard, I'm not really confident that I know what to think about this deal. And that concerns me. Um, I, I get to eat dinner once a week with a lot of my neighbors in Cleveland Park uh, at a community center, and most of them are unhoused. All the details I've heard so far, whatever we do as a city, I want it to benefit the people who need it the most. And I can think of lots of benefits for people who can afford these experiences. I'm really concerned that there aren't enough benefits for people who need uh, our support right now. I know a stadium isn't supposed to solve all of our problems. I'm not opposed to a stadium. What I want you to hear from me is that I'm really concerned about my neighbors, and I wish that we would put much more time and attention into caring for the least of these and rushing towards solving those problems instead of rushing towards putting up uh, a new or improved stadium. So I, I think that we can have the best of both worlds, but I think we need to take a really hard look at this before we commit to something that's only going to be beneficial for a few people instead of beneficial for everyone, and especially those who need it the most. Thank you so much for letting me speak. Thank you very much. Good evening, Good evening. Um, council members. Thank you for hosting this event, and thank you everyone who um, has spoken so far. My name is Berthina Nabah McKinney. I am the um, District 4 uh, Metro School Board member um, in the Donaldson, Hermitage, and Old Hickory area. Um, one thing that I, um, when it comes to this proposed stadium, one thing that I am reserved about is how our how this funding impacts Metro Nashville Public Schools. Um, we have a lot of capital needs improvements across our district. Right here at McGavick High School is one of the biggest needs, um, as well as schools across our district. And so I am always cautious to see what the impact of the stadium um, and the costs that are being allocated to the stadium and how that will impact the, imp the infrastructure needs that are needed within our public school system. Um, and so while my husband is a big fan of the Titans and would love um, a new stadium as a school board member, that has to be my number one priority is to make sure that we are doing our due diligence um, to ensure that the allocation of fund, uh, funds um, are being distributed appropriately and are not impacting us um, in a significant way. Um, while I'm appreciative of our mayor and our council for for being the largest contributors of the capital improvements over the last few years, um, we still have a lot of makeup to do from what hasn't been done um, across our district. And so I just want us to be mindful of that um, as we're looking at the new deal um, and as we're working to, to find resolve in, um, in, in ensuring that all of our um, needs are being met across our district and across our city. Thank you. Thanks very much for being here. Good evening, Metro Council. Thank y'all for holding the last public hearing tonight against, uh, well, not against, sorry, for um, the new stadium. I am Tamika White. I reside in Nashville, Tennessee, and I am here speaking on behalf of members who could not be here tonight. Mr. Richie Waters is currently in California taking care of his mom. He said, this is a good time to ask you a question, Metro Council. I was there when they were building the first Titan Stadium. Why are they needing another one and more upgrades? The Yankee Stadium lasted 83 years. We couldn't get 25 years out of this one. Whose fault is that exactly? Miss Myrtle Shelton, she couldn't be here either. She said, sorry, I can't be here tonight. However, I do feel like the roads here in Nashville are horrible surrounding the stadium 
and all over Nashville. I think that needs to be our priority because if we're on flats and busted tires and the city won't um, and the city won't pay our claims for roads that they won't tend to, I don't think we need a new stadium. Our priorities need to be realigned. And there's one more. I think I'm on three minutes. No, I did. Okay. Miss Kelly Peterson could not be here tonight. We keep building in Nashville to attract more tourists. When is the city going to put a sharper focus on the people who already live here? We have so much infrastructure that is climbing around us. We have roads that are falling apart, water and sewer pipes that are disintegrating. Housing is unobtainable. Low income housing is falling apart and we don't have a strong public transit system between us and all of the workers who live here in surrounding counties. Why is it that we can't seem to focus on negotiating with Wilson, Williamson, Rutherford, Sumner, Robertson, or even Cheatham counties to create a multi-county transit system to fix our infrastructure issues? But we sure can come up with a multi-billion dollar stadium deal for smaller venues to hold events so Garth Brooks doesn't have to lose money for a concert. On paper, the Titans deal looks like we as taxpayers won't have to pay extra, but there's always hidden costs. You know, you said all those numbers that are unknown, those. I am opposed to spending more money, more tax dollars on something for citizens of Nashville that we, for some, for some citizens of Nashville who can't even attend. While you forget the rest of us and let us do, let us deal with the fallen infrastructure, let's get the order right and correct the city's problems and those city's problems and then add a new closed venue once you deal with our homeless issue. Thank you. Thanks very much. Anybody else want to come up and talk? All right, um, then, oh, go ahead, sir. I think the word has been expressed over and over, the night is slow down. And there's a difference in slow down and, and, and stop. And, and I'm just curious what the mayor know and what the people that's with the Titan organization know. It's the same thing that you on the council know. First of all, I would like to identify myself as Vincent Horsley, and I'm proud to be a constituent of uh, Councilman Hager. But um, but we we I think you know I'm I'm a, a big football fan. Matter of fact, I'm gonna hurry up and get home and watch Monday Night Football. <laughs> but at the same time that uh, we can just jump in there, you know, and and just say that this is something that sounds good. It, it, it because it's new is not necessarily mean it's the best thing that you can get. You know, I, I was, was fortunate enough to build a home several years ago. And I found out that once you build, you're gonna always have some renovations. And that's more expensive than when you actually start building. And I'm not uh, 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 suggesting that we renovate the old stadium but what are we looking forward to the, to the new state, the proposed new stadium? I think we need to slow down, make sure everything that we can imagine uh, is included in it. And then it's, it's been said by so many people here. You know, let's not just have our minds set on the East Bank. You know, I'm also thinking about Old Hickory, Donaldson, Hermitage, North Nashville, South Nashville, and other parts of the city, to how can, what can we do to impact them? If we can do, wrap it all together, that's fine. But I don't know whether we're capable of doing that because I don't hear enough conversation, even, and I, and I, and I listen to, uh, uh, the, the council meetings, and I appreciate all of you, 
on what's it on the first and third uh, 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 Tuesday. But let's don't just jump in there because somebody else said jump. We feel like we need to jump. It's, it's the latest said, you know, if they if we're not doing it fast enough, you know, you you know, you know, you know, let don't let the the back door hit them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh so again, we want to certainly appreciate you. And I'm not only that, I'm also on the board of the Donaldson Hermitage Neighborhood Association. And we just certainly appreciate all of you here and uh, to make this, uh, uh, all of this happen. Thank you very much, sir. All right, uh, anybody else? You get to tell your relatives in 20 years you were right because the video is going to be around. All right, not seeing anybody else, um, we'll wrap up the meeting. Um, thank you all for coming out. It really does mean a lot to us to hear directly from you about how you feel about this. Um, the next time this is on the council agenda is um, next Tuesday. And so um, we're really glad to hear from you. And thanks a lot. Have a good evening. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again or for more information on this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.